A reading from Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace from the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Let us worship God. Today is Palm Sunday. It is the day when we remember the events that took place at the beginning of the last week of Jesus' life, events that will lead us from the celebrations of his entry into Jerusalem towards the horror of the cross, and then beyond the cross to the empty tomb and the joyful proclamation of the resurrection on Easter morning. It is a strange one this year. As much as we would love to be together, we know that we can't be. But we keep in our thoughts and in our prayers those who are most affected by this terrible pandemic, the, those who are suffering, but also the frontline workers and essential workers who are doing such a wonderful job to keep our society running. As we go through the service today, we're really thankful for the members of our church community who have contributed pictures and music and their time in offering the readings. And we really do hope that you enjoy it very much and find consolation and encouragement in it. As a special added bonus at the end of this little video, there is going to be a Palm Sunday challenge put together for us by Shara, who is in charge of the youth and child ministries in our church. But the challenge that she has laid before us to make a Palm Sunday cross is one that the young and the young at heart can all take up. So I'd invite you now just to sit back and relax and enjoy this time of worship, knowing that the God who loves us is with each and every one of us. Gracious, holy, and loving God, you who are the great mystery in whom we live and move and have our being, you who are the source of all life and the destiny of every soul, 
you who hold all things in your tender embrace. We turn our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our souls towards your faithful and gracious presence with us. Bless us, O God, with that peace that passes all human understanding. Allow us to catch new glimpses of your presence, your truth, and your beauty at work within us and among us. Grant us the grace to respond to you with renewed faith, with deepened hope, with transformed love. O God, as we gather together this day at different times and in different places, be pleased to dwell among each one of us, we pray. Lift from us the stress and the despair, the burdens and challenges that we bear. Heal our brokenness and pour out your refreshing spirit upon us. Forgive us, O God, for our mistakes, our failures, our sins against you and against one another. Allow us to know your grace and your forgiveness. Inspire us to amend our lives so that we might better reflect your purposes for us. We pray all of these things, O God, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Psalms, 118, verses 1 and 2, 19 to 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will exalt you. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. He says steadfast love endures forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from Matthew 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! 
When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble, riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. These ancient words from the book of the prophet Zechariah and quoted in the Gospel of Matthew are what we are used to hearing when we join together on this Palm Sunday, the Sunday on which we recall Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We hold palm branches and we shout with the crowd, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now that's what we're used to doing. But these are not usual times by any stretch of the imagination. Instead of being together in the sanctuary, I am speaking to you through the camera on my computer and wondering just who might hear these words. The spread of the COVID-19 virus around the world has disrupted almost everything that is part of our normal lives, including gathering together for worship, especially in this holy week when we remember and retell the story of Jesus' passion and resurrection. But somehow, through the marvels of modern communication technology, we are joined together and we hear these words again and we are reminded that the story is not dependent on us or on our buildings or on our usual way of doing things. In fact, maybe these days provide an opportunity to hear this powerful story anew and in a different way. What does this story of Hosanna and a new commandment and crucify and he is risen say to us when we are isolating ourselves in our homes and having to adhere to ever stricter regulations limiting our contact with others? In our Thursday evening Bible study, we've been following Jesus on his journey from Galilee to Jerusalem. 
In Matthew's Gospel, there are three predictions of what will happen when Jesus arrives in the city, and they all point to the way of the cross. They are words of instruction also for those who would be followers or disciples of Jesus. We talked about the fact that these are not the words you would usually put on a position description to encourage people to apply for a job. Listen to this. Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. It's not the usual. It's not the expected. But perhaps these are words that can resonate with us in such a time as this. The way of Jesus points in the first place to how we can follow in the way of service in response to what God has done for us. We certainly see this reflected in the dedication of so many health care workers and first responders and in all those people who continue to do their jobs just so that we can maintain the necessities of life. We see it also in the willingness of so many to just be in touch with neighbors and friends and family and particularly with those who may be feeling the impact of isolation most deeply. It's not necessarily the way we would choose first, but it is the way that leads us to a deeper and more authentic experience of life together. So as we hear the hosannas of this Palm Sunday, let us remember and follow the humble person who rode into Jerusalem and whose way would bring new life to a world weary of death and despair. Blessings to all of you in this holy week. Amen. Living in Almighty God, we turn to you this day with hearts filled with gratitude for the many blessings that you pour into our lives for good food and clean water to sustain and nourish our bodies, for the blessings of friends and family members with whom to share our days, for a land of peace and prosperity, a city of kindness and compassion, for opportunities to use our creativity and our intellect, our reason and our imagination in the service of you and of one another. We give you our thanks. We thank you for this world in which you have placed us, for its stunning beauty and its amazing diversity. Grant us the opportunity to be good and faithful stewards of all that you have made. This day, O oh God, we also bow before you with a deep awareness of the reality of suffering. We pray for those who are affected by this pandemic, for the sick and the suffering and the dying. May they know your comfort and your peace for caregivers and frontline workers and researchers and the countless numbers who are offering their abilities and skills in the preservation of life and health, may they know your strength and your power. For the leaders of our communities and of the nations of the world, may they know your wisdom and your guidance in the decisions that they make. If it be your will, O God, bring a quick end to this pandemic and to the suffering that so many of your children are experiencing. As we await that day, renew hope within us, O God. Bless us with new visions of how to strive towards a world of compassion, of justice, of goodness, of abundance for all. Grant each one of us new opportunities to use our skills, our resources, our energy, our time, our very lives in ways that bring blessing to those around us. Bless your church both in this place and throughout the world that we may be a blessing to this world that you so dearly love. As we journey into this week of contemplation and reflection on the extent of your love for us and for the world, may the Spirit of Christ dwell within us, renewing and refreshing us and leading us both into the shadow of the cross and into the joy of the empty tomb. Accept these our prayers in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forevermore. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go and do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with God in all that you do. And may the love of Almighty God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the comfort and friendship of God's Holy Spirit bless you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Hello everyone. Most of you might know me or heard my name. My name is Shara and I work here at St. Andrews with the church school. So for this season, because um, I know we're all at home and probably for looking for something to do, um, this Sunday is special because we remember Palm Sunday. And I know not many of you will be able to get one of these beautiful palm leaves. However, I have an activity that we can do with uh, construction paper or just paper, and you can color it. Um, here I have the instructions, and I'll just uh, record myself while I try to do this. So hopefully this is gonna be okay. And hopefully once you finish, your own palm cross, you can send it to us. Okay, let's start. like the video and that you try this at home as you can see um, I attempted several times to do this till I got it right now I have my palm cross happy palm Sunday everyone